This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 15th day of September in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here is what we're tracking tonight. Two days before the arrival of the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on an official visit, the government has still not revealed a reason for the visit and the agenda of the meetings that Pompeo will be having with government officials. Leader of the opposition Joe Harmon today said the government needs to answer questions surrounding the visit and its secrecy. Mr. Harmon said the APNU AFC in the National Assembly has been trying to get the foreign minister to answer questions regarding the visit, but the speaker so far has not allowed the questions to be posed. So we find this to be um, a visit that is shrouded in secrecy, and I believe that the Guyanese people need to know what it is, if it has to do with their territorial integrity, if it has to do with issues of sovereignty, the Guyanese people need to know. And that's, that's very important. Beyond that, I would say I have reformulated the question here in the National Assembly, and I expect that the Minister of Foreign Affairs will answer that question, not only to bring clarity to the members of Parliament, but to bring clarity to all of Guyana. Pompeo will be the highest-ranking U.S. government official to visit Guyana in more than three decades when he steps on Guyanese soil. He's also expected to visit Brazil, Suriname and Colombia this week. There are concerns that the visit may be related to the U.S. efforts to oust Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. Guyana's position has always been to stay out of the internal affairs in Venezuela. The opposition believes Guyana needs to stick to that position and not dabble in the affairs of other countries. I've always said that we've always said that we believe in non-intervention in the affairs of any foreign state. And that has always been our position and our posture. Um, so I will, I will leave it at that. That has been our position. Um, because anything that affects the territorial integrity and the sovereignty of our state, I said it here um, when Parliament had opened, that it is an area which we will, we will speak as one voice on it. Anything that has to do with our territorial integrity or national sovereignty. Mr. Pompeo will be in Guyana on Thursday and Friday and is expected to hold talks with the President, the Foreign Minister and the CARICOM Secretary General. In the aftermath of Guyana's elections back in March, Pompeo and his State Department were very vocal on Twitter, pressing the former APNU AFC government to concede the elections. He even announced sanctions against officials of the former government. Those sanctions may have never been instituted. More news coming up in a moment. Isuzu D-Max, built to work. Whether it's mining, construction, agriculture, or just adventure, Isuzu D-Max does the job. Put it to the test. Isuzu D-Max, engineered to keep every promise. Marex is the authorized dealer for all Isuzu products. Marex, telephone 226-1482 and 226-1306. Falls, the official distributors of Castrol Marine Mining and Power Gen Lubricants in Guyana, now has in stock CRB engine oils, high spin hydraulic oil, Vecton semi synthetic truck oils, and Siltex cylinder oils. For the best prices, check our dealers countrywide or visit Falls Gas Station at Land of Canaan, East Bank, Demerara. Or call the commercial manager on 6084998. Gastrol, it's more than just oil, it's liquid engineering. Diana, we've been through it all. But as a people, we have weathered every storm and risen to every challenge. Because it is the people of Guyana that gives it its strength. All the people, regardless of race, class, or religion, we, we are, are one, one people, people, one strength. And now is our time. A time to rise. Together, we rise. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc.
Welcome back. Well, a war of words has broken out between Works Minister Juan Edgel and the APNU AFC. The opposition coalition today slammed the Minister of Works over his decision to access the personal file of APNU AFC Member of Parliament Amanda Walton Desire and release the information from that file to the public. Walton Desire, up to two weeks ago, was the General Counsel at the Guiana Civil Aviation Authority, a position she held for seven years. She was terminated two days after she took the oath as a Member of Parliament for the APNU AFC. The termination has been seen as a political hatchet job by the new PP civic government, and there are reports that the civil aviation boss Egbert Field was instructed to fire the general counsel. However, in a statement to the Government Department of Public Information last evening, Minister Agile, who waved around documents from Walton Desir's personal file, admitted that he requested the file from the body's Human Resources Department. He said Walton Desir was terminated for not doing her job, and not because she was an APNU AFC member. Going through Ms. Desir's file, you will discover that her tenure at the GCAA could be described as anything else except being productive and contributing to the success of this agency. Her employment at this agency was about money, the letters in her file and the exchange of letters has always been about her emoluments, terms and conditions of engagement, disagreement about whether she should be paid midpoint or maximum of the scale. But firing back today, the APNU AFC accused Agile of calculated political persecution and said it was going to raise the issue with a number of international agencies. The APNU AFC said Agile slandered Ms. Walton Desir and admitted to the public that he requested her personal file. The coalition said that move by Agile was entirely out of order and improper. According to the coalition, the minister should have acted properly and responsibly by requesting a report from the Civil Aviation Authority's Director General and not by making direct contact with the Human Resources Department for the personal file of a former employee. The APNU AFC said it is clear that it was political interference that led to the firing of Walton Desire. The party said Edgel acted way beyond the perimeters of acceptable conduct and indulged in misconduct in public office. A defiant minister, Juan Agile, defended his decision today and said he believes he has every right as the subject minister to access the employment file since statements were made by the Member of Parliament in public. He said he believes he was also within his right to provide details of her contract since she served as a public officer. But speaking briefly with reporters this afternoon, the APNU AFC Member of Parliament said Mr. Agile was conservative on the truth. Apart from the very, very unethical uh action of disclosing what is on someone's personal file. A lot of what he said, in fact, all of what he said is untrue. Um, thankfully, as a lawyer, I have documentation to back up what it is that I, uh, what it is that I would have said. And so um, my lawyers are going to be pursuing this matter because it's not something that I intend to take very lightly. Mrs. Walton Desir has already indicated that she intends to take legal action against the government's decision to terminate her contract. She started her job at the Civil Aviation Authority under the previous PP Civic Administration and also previously worked in the Ministry of Works under the PPP. She said it is very clear that she was never a political appointee. The Guiana Police Force this morning revealed that the large packets of cocaine that were found in that crash small plane at the Sano in Region 7 weighed 858 pounds. The foreign plane was found yesterday close to the Isano airstrip with the cocaine and a dead body inside it. Police investigators are still trying to ascertain the identity of the dead man. Three other foreign nationals who were held in the same Isano area after they landed on another small plane remain in police custody. One of the three men is believed to have been the pilot of the crashed plane that was found with the cocaine and the dead body. He was the only one with injuries consistent with an accident when arrested. Investigators believe the three men were attempting to move the cargo from the crashed plane when they were caught at nine miles in Asano. Two of the three men are Brazilian nationals while the other man is a Venezuelan. 
The probe is being carried out by the police, the Guiana Defense Force, and the Customs Anti Narcotics Unit. The Guiana Civil Aviation Authority is also expected to assist with the investigations. Already facing more than 80 charges in the court for conspiracy to commit a felony, Cuban national Yuri Garcia Dominguez and his Guyanese wife Atika Ishmael are likely to face money laundering charges soon. The couple has been accused of duping several persons out of millions of dollars through their financial investment company. They have denied the charges. But with those cases still before the courts and no trials started as yet, Attorney General Anil Nandlal has announced that money laundering investigations have been activated. The investigations are expanding and moving in the direction now of anti-money laundering and, um, and under the AML CFT structure. That component of the investigative arm of the state has now been activated. It was the Attorney General who triggered a multi-agency investigation back in March after he said he received hundreds of complaints about persons investing in the company owned by the couple. Those persons reportedly complained that they were expecting hefty returns on their financial investment, but got nothing in return. The Attorney General has described the entire operation as a Ponzi scheme. He said the business operated by the couple was never registered to conduct any financial operations in Guyana. Mr. Nandlal has explained that the main objective of the probe is to get the investors their money back, but there has been no luck so far with those efforts. All the information provided by the arrested persons as to where the monies are supposed to be have been fully investigated and they have led to nowhere. The accounts given and the companies that were provided that were supposed to be holding this money in various countries upon investigations none of these companies were found to be existing none of the bank accounts were found to be existing in his statement the attorney general also explained that the authorities even granted a request by the owner of the financial company for an account to be opened at a local bank so that the money that was invested by persons could be transferred to that account for reimbursement but that came up blank. An account was opened at a commercial bank and to date not a cent has been returned to that account. He then said he wanted access to a computer so that he can do certain transactions on the computer that ought to bring back the money. He was provided with that computer yet no money came back. Nandlal said there have even been checks to see what assets the Cuban national owns in Guyana and those checks have revealed that he does not own any property. The Attorney General believes once the man is granted bail, if he is granted bail, he may find a way to leave the country. The attorney for the Cuban national and his wife has accused the police and the investigators of frustrating the process with their daily charges against the man and his wife. Attorney Dexter Todd has said it is now an abuse of the judicial process. And following those statements by the Attorney General that a couple accused of being involved in a Ponzi scheme would now be facing money laundering investigations, the attorney for the couple is now accusing the government of painting a false narrative about the pair and the investigations. Attorney Dexter Todd told reporters this afternoon that his clients have been cooperating with the investigators even as they remain in custody. He said he's disappointed in many of the statements that were made by the Attorney General and many of the statements were false. Because those pronouncements made by the learned Attorney General were definitely not accurate and it did not, of course, reflect what was happening between the interaction between the police and uh, our client. We want to say very clearly that to the best of our knowledge and of course we represent the voice of our client there has been no bank account given to our client 
no information of a bank account given to our client and our client of course while he remains committed to see that the contractual obligations under the contract signed by the by the persons who, who filed the complaint that those matters are resolved amicably and in the best interest of both parties best interest of the company and best interest of the investors in response to the attorney general's claim that the accused was provided with a computer to conduct transactions to ensure people get their money back attorney todd said that too is false in relation to uh the computers um, that were or the computer that was made available to my client in the Luziknan prison that is absolutely false there has never been any opportunity in which my client had uh, to use a computer or a phone at the at the prison the last time I checked and I confirmed this with uh, many of the officers there those items are still prohibited items in the prison. Mr. Todd said at the CID headquarters his client was provided with a computer to begin transactions but was unable to do so. The attorney also said he remains disappointed in the pronouncement by officials which gave the impression that his clients have not been cooperating. But by the third day, we were sure of the narrative that the, uh, that the state wanted to create. They wanted to create the environment or to give the perception that they were making attempts for monies to come back through an account and that my client, that our client was being taken to the CID office and that he was refusing to cooperate. The government of Guyana, through the Attorney General, has explained that a task force will be set up to further probe the company at the center of the Ponzi scheme allegations. Attorney Dexter Todd said he is prepared to challenge any new charges that may be laid against his clients. The couple has repeatedly, through their attorney, declared their innocence. The death toll from the coronavirus in Guyana continues to climb along with new cases of the disease. Today, the health ministry announced that 74 new cases of coronavirus and two more deaths have been recorded. The two latest fatalities have been identified as a 75-year-old man from Region 4 and an 86-year-old woman from Region 1. Guyana's death toll now stands at 58, with six new deaths being recorded in the past three days alone. Between March and July of this year, the country had recorded 20 COVID-19 deaths. But in the past six weeks, that number jumped by 38. The health ministry has not been saying much about the deaths or the continuous long wait for results. Persons continue to complain that they have to wait up to three weeks for their COVID-19 results. Two prisoners at the Lusignan jail have tested positive for coronavirus, and prison authorities have no clue how the two might have contracted the virus. In a statement this afternoon, the director of prisons, Gladwin Samuels, said the results for the two prisoners were received this afternoon. The two were being held in the holding bay at the jail. Mr. Samuel said contact tracing has started and all steps are being taken to segregate persons that the two prisoners might have come into contact with. He explained that resources are being gathered to prevent further spread. The prison director said all persons who are exhibiting signs and symptoms of COVID-19 will be examined and exposed to the standard operational procedures outlined by the Ministry of Health. Systems are also being put in place to monitor the rest of the prison population and to monitor prison officers and staff, he added. The prison director said the matter is being viewed very seriously and all mitigation strategies are in place for the protection of prisoners and staff members at the jailhouse. Let's tell you now that a 27-year-old Lance Corporal of the Guyana Police Force was air-dashed to the city last evening from Region 1 after he was badly stabbed during the execution of an arrest of a wanted man. Lance Corporal Bertland Scotland was stabbed to his left hand, his left lower abdomen, above his left eye and to his left buttocks by wanted man Samuel Allen. 
The policeman was first treated at the Port Kaituma Hospital but had to be airdashed to Georgetown because of the severity of the injuries. He is now a patient of the Georgetown Hospital. The wanted man seen here, Samuel Allen, was arrested in Port Kaituma. He was wanted for the murder of pensioner Earl Peters and the stabbing of a taxi driver and another policeman. He is likely to face charges soon. In the courts right now, five days after Essequibo resident Lanisa Peters was brutally stabbed to death in her own home, her ex-lover has been charged with a murder and has been remanded to jail. 42-year-old truck driver Nandran Persad of Golden Fleece Essequibo Coast appeared at the Anna Regina Court this morning to face the murder charge. He was not required to enter a plea to the indictable charge. The court heard it on the 10th of September at Good Hope Supernam Essequibo Coast, Prasad murdered his ex-girlfriend Lanisa Peters after he became upset when she answered a late-night telephone call. The woman reportedly returned home to find Prasad sitting in the house. He was let into the house by a relative. An earlier police report explained that when the woman answered her telephone and Prasad overheard a man's voice on the other line, he became angry and attacked the woman, stabbing her multiple times to the body. The accused escaped from the scene but was later arrested at his home by the investigating ranks. The matter will come up in court again on the 25th of September. Across the region is coming up next. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. We all know a strong educational foundation is a key to successful learning. Global Technology combines award-winning curriculum with innovative technology and teacher support to help students reach their potential. Our online platform creates an engaging learning experience. Using any device, you can be a part of amazing class discussions, collaborate with others, and have access to virtual learning software. With our multiple payment methods, you will never have to leave home. Find out how global technology can allow you to learn anything, anywhere, at any time. Falls, the official distributors of Castrol Marine Mining and Power Gen Lubricants in Guyana, now has in stock CRB Engine Oils, High Spin Hydraulic Oil, Vecton Semi Synthetic Truck Oils, and Siltex Cylinder Oils. For the best prices, check our dealers countrywide or visit Falls Gas Station at Land of Canaan, East Bank, Demerara. Or call the commercial manager on 6084998. Gastrol, it's more than just oil, it's liquid engineering. standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Across the region right now, Barbados has announced its intention to become a republic and remove Britain's Queen Elizabeth as head of state by November of next year. Governor General Dame Sandra Mason gave the update this morning at the opening of a new parliamentary session in Bridgetown. Dame Sandra said the administration of Prime Minister Mia Motley will take the next logical step to make Barbados into a republic in time for the country's 55th anniversary of independence in November 2021. The Governor General is duty bound to deliver the speech prepared by the political administration. In 1998, the Barbados Constitutional Review Commission recommended Republican status, and in 2015, then Prime Minister Frundel Stewart said his administration would have implemented the recommendation. 
Most Caricom states maintained formal links to the British monarchy after gaining their independence. If Barbados goes through with its plans, it will join Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana as members of Caricom's Big Four to sever ties with the monarchy. Police in Panama say they have detained two Panamanian nationals who were traveling in a car carrying 79 packets of illegal drugs. Media in Panama have identified one of the detained as the governor of Gunayala, Eric Martello. The police said they had been acting on a tip-off and stopped the car in the early hours of Tuesday morning at a roadblock. They found the drugs stashed underneath the seats. Panamanian President Nito Cortizo asked the interior minister to arrange for the governor's immediate dismissal. The president wrote on Twitter that he was committed to a zero-tolerance policy towards any behavior which goes against ethics that all public servants have to adhere to. So far, there has been no comment from Mr. Martello or anyone representing him. And finally tonight, international news. America's reputation among some allies has fallen to its lowest point in nearly two decades, according to a global survey. The findings of the Pew Research Center poll reflect public perceptions of the U.S. in 13 countries. Positive views of the U.S. has fallen to a medium of 34% across the country surveyed, and only 16% confidence in President Donald Trump. An overwhelming majority of 84% said the U.S. has handled coronavirus badly. Though favorable views of the U.S. has been falling in recent years, in 2020 the perceptions in several countries were the lowest, according to the Pew Research. In only one country surveyed, South Korea, did a majority of the public view the U.S. favorably. Only a quarter of Germans and less than a third of Frenchmen and women view the U.S. favorably. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting.